Ahoy! Today I wanted to talk about the settings that I use in New World and that I would recommend using at least for the most part because there are certain settings that actually make a big difference in how you're playing. So this is basically the layout that you start out with unless they've changed something in the most recent open beta and there are a few that you definitely want to look into. We're going to look at the key bindings as well. There's a lot of interesting stuff there. Uh, but first we're going to go into the preferences. Um, not really anything that you need to change here. You have like uh, subtitles and achievement uh, notifications, which you can turn off if you want. Um, I turn off the analytics reporting because I think it might slow you down like a little bit at times. Um, but yeah, this is very basic. Uh, but what we want to look into is uh, the gameplay settings. Obviously, you have your camera sensitivity here that you can adjust. If you have invert camera, if you really want that. Camera shake is something you can turn off and if in certain situations it gets too annoying. I hadn't had any issues with it so far. Uh, the reticle, I think, is something that it can be nice to be seen. So right now, uh, it is actually shown because I have my weapon in my hand. But if I sheath it, it's not shown. Um, so this is, I guess... It's partially an immersion thing. Uh, I think it's not an issue to not have it uh, shown because basically the moment your weapon is not sheathed, you'll see it anyways. Um, social interactions hotkey hint is something you can turn on in the beginning. It just tells you that you can use uh, H or whatever you have a bounder to to interact with other players. Um, so this is where we get to the more interesting stuff. Um, the vital health values uh, is basically the... No, I kind of demonstrated right now. No, I have contextual fading on. Um, let me turn, turn that off first and then I can show you. Uh, so now it should be able to. Okay, if you look at my health bar right now at the bottom, the little gray bar here, I can try it against the dark. There's nothing on there. So if I uh, go into the, uh, into the settings here and I turn it on, then it'll show me the value on there. And I think that's pretty important. I think it's important to know how much health you have exactly. So I would recommend turning that one on. And what you already saw, what I did there as well, was uh, I turned off the contextual fading uh, which means that you will always have all display elements shown, um, which you can decide for yourself if that's something you need. I think uh, so far there aren't that many suggestions I needed it. Uh, it looks a little bit nicer when you can turn it off in between when you don't need certain information, but uh, yeah, it's, it's preference. Uh, the next one I would say is not preference though. Always show weapon is off right now, and it was off for me in the beginning when I first started. You turn it on, you can see there's a second weapon slot right there. And this is really important because this displays your other weapons cooldowns. And uh, you want to know that in fights, you want to know when you should switch. And uh, I think if, you, if you'd have that turned off, then it doesn't always display. So I would definitely turn that on so you always have visibility of both of your weapons. I think that one is pretty important. So what you can see right now, there's certain elements that I don't really need to see right now, like for example, my inventory button. Uh, that's the, the downside with like contextual fading that uh, otherwise it would disappear right now. It's always shown, but yeah, pros and cons to that one, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then uh, in terms of, okay, so next one that we have is actually the uh, ability cooldowns first. This uh, I can't show right now, but it shows it like circles under your character uh, what your abilities cooldowns are. I actually don't look at it much. I actually look down to the corner more because I find it harder to see because it's like semi-transparent. Uh, but I have it on anyways. Problem is it overlays with certain debuff effects sometimes. Uh, I don't know if they fixed that already or not. Uh, depending on that, you may want to turn it off just to know what the debuffs are, how long the debuffs are. Uh, floating damage numbers basically just uh, d demonstrate like where the, the damage numbers on the enemies will be. You can have them locked or you can have them floating away. I like the floating one, but yeah, whatever. Uh, you can turn off dual invites entirely if you don't ever want to duel. I have that on, of course. Uh, auto traverse is something you can actually turn on in this game. So far, I haven't really found any situations where it causes problems um, because it's pretty decent in what it does, but I'm sure sooner or later we're going to run into a situation where it leads to problems and you die because you auto-traverse over something or something. But yeah, I have it turned off, but if you, uh, if you use auto-walk a lot to get to places, then it can be advisable uh, to turn it on just so you don't get stopped by obstacles on the way. So I sometimes turn it on and sometimes off. Uh, targeted healing... Um, I think is good, but I haven't really used the, the healing staff at Lifestyle much, so I can't really tell you all too much about the uh, the way you should ideally set this up. Um, I would say just try it out for yourself and see what you like, basically, if you're if you're a healer player. I'm a melee, so that doesn't really concern me all too much. Uh, these ones are new, I think. So auto pin main story quest mode, that I think is a, is a good one to do, so you always know what the most uh, important ones are. You can also turn off auto pin side quests. 
uh, or faction missions. That I think is pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to auto pin everything because it's really, really easy to unpin things uh, once you know how to. Uh, recipes I wouldn't pin because uh, unless you unless you specifically... Well, actually, you would have to specifically pin them first in order to even have them auto pinned. So no, actually, you can turn that on as well because you have to go into the crafting menu and say, I want to pin this recipe. So you probably want to see it at that point. So yeah, I'm actually turning all of them on, but again, that is very much preference. Visual settings, obviously preference as well. Uh, I'm just running it on high. Uh, so far from what I found, uh, there isn't really that much of a difference uh, in terms of uh, the CP, uh, the GPU strain that it, that it gives you. It, it, it makes a difference, but not as much as I thought. And visually, it also looks relatively similar unless you go really low. And uh, yeah, you have certain extra settings here, like cap FPS in the background, which uh, I think could be useful and dynamic resolution scaling could be useful. I haven't really tested them enough. I lock my FPS to 60 for now because my current monitor doesn't support more anyways. But again, that's preference. Um, audio settings, obviously just the volume of basically everything and uh, how you how you want to hear it. Uh, and you can consider if you want to have audio in the background or not. So if you tab out, if you still want to hear the audio or not, I turn that off usually, but both works depending on what you want to use it for. Communications is an important one because that doesn't necessarily always work by default. So enable uh, voice chat, I would say, if you want to use it, obviously, otherwise don't. Um, but often you will have to change your speaker uh, and and maybe also your microphone. Like for me, these were not the ones that uh, they were supposed to be in order to actually uh, have sound playing. So you will see uh, if it's not working, you'll see like a, a like a speaker sign basically above someone else who's talking, but you won't actually hear them. So yeah, you wanna you wanna make sure that's the case. So you wanna make sure that these two are uh, correct, and you can set your voice to group only as well. This is good to know. Um, so if you're only using it in parties, then you can use it in group only, and only a party can hear you as far as I'm aware. So you can do that too. Uh, there's also like other stuff here, like language filter. I have that on because of streaming, um, and yeah. You can you can do a variety of things. Uh, this one can be a bit annoying, like close chat after send. I think I'm gonna turn that off for now. But it's up to you. It, the, the chat panel at the moment is a bit inconvenient either way, so you can you can kind of try both. I'm gonna try that one for now, but that one is whatever. Um, there's some some social notification stuff here that you uh, can do in order to uh, in order to stream, so hide large banners for incoming coin transfers as well as friend group and company invitations, so you can't get spammed with like stuff above your character. Um, yeah, we got some accessibility settings here for color blindness as well and text size, which is really nice. Uh, nothing that I need to touch here, but uh, I think this can be can be really good too, if depending on what you need. Uh, and that brings us to the key bindings. Now there are quite a few things we want to do with the key bindings to to set them up a little bit better because. Uh, Actually, let me restore that to default once and then uh, show you what a weird pain it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to hate this, but hey. Um, okay, so right now there are a lot of keys that are just very inconveniently placed. The only ones that I would say are good in their place are uh, block and basic attacks. Uh, you can actually rebind the dodge to right click if you are a heavy dodge user and you don't use block that much, if you're a ranged character. Um, but that could lead to some other issues if you're... Um, if you like trying to to uh, scope with certain weapons and stuff, so I probably wouldn't do it. Uh, so because you'd have to like, I think you have to rebind a lot more for that to work properly. So first thing you want to do is bind dodge to something that you can reach easily and you can use a lot. For me, that is uh, backspace, but that's because I have a slightly different laid out keyboard. Uh, for you, that is probably spacebar. So we're gonna do that on uh, spacebar for now. Um, you'll see that unbinds the jump. We we'll get to that later. Uh, sheath your weapon is something that may or may not uh, come in handy. Uh, used to be very good, but um, we will see in, in just a bit if that still works. So let's actually try that out. Let's try if we can still sheath our weapon. And oh, we are now on different key bindings here. Let me get used to that. Okay, yeah, it still works for now. Um, surprise, but uh, hey. So what you can do is you can dodge roll and then you can sheath your weapon uh, and you can cancel the post dodge roll animation. So that means that for now you definitely want to have sheath on a key binding um, that functions. In your case, this is once again a different layout. So where you want to bind this is to left alt. So um, that is basically what you probably want to have it look like. So you can use sheath right next to the dodge. Um, that also means that you're probably going to end up putting your jump somewhere uh, on the other side. I can actually have a look if that's bound somewhere. So I would say, yeah, that's what you're probably going to do on left shift if you're using a, a WASD layout. 
so that uh, you can easily uh, use it still, but it's, it's not going to be a priority. So um, toggle run is going to be a bit awkward. Uh, I would say put it on tab if you're if you're using a WASD layout. Uh, this is the reason why I'm not using a WASD layout. Um, but yeah, you want to have that somewhere close as well because you're going to do a lot of running. And then we have our abilities as well. So those are currently on QRF, and I think that's a pretty decent layout for the WASD layout. You have them somewhere near you. Interact as well. You can swap interact and weapon ability three depending on how you prefer that in terms of layout, but you want to have them uh, very close to your movement bindings uh, in order to, to use them effectively. And then you have uh, your secondary interact and everything on the, on the left side of the keyboard, basically. So that's very good. Um, here, in, in, in terms of the other stuff, you don't really need to uh, change all too much, I think. Um, hide UI is the only one you unfortunately can't change. I think it would be cool if you could. Uh, but yeah, that's just what it is. Uh, life staff, you may have to change your layout. This is very important, like the self targets, so you can heal yourself quickly as well, uh, especially when you're on your own stuff as well. Uh, so make sure to, to put that on a bind that's convenient to you. I think left control is not bad, but um, yeah, just, just consider where you want that. Um, down here we have fishing as well. Uh, I would change that to something else. Where you put it exactly is up to you, of course. Um, the the problem is that uh, you're gonna use it quite often because sometimes it kicks you out of the the fishing button if you ever fish, obviously. Uh, and maybe you might have an enemy attacking or something as well. I don't actually know if it auto switches your weapon in those cases. So you want to have that somewhere where you can easily toggle between it. But it's not in the way of your of your combat buttons and stuff as well. So find a key for you that works for you that is ideally not as far away as F3 in my opinion. Um, just so you can quickly swap if it comes down to it. Uh, again, my like, keyboard layout is weird, so I can put it on like hashtag, which is relatively close, but that won't work for other people. The housing bindings you don't really need to change. They are only while building in the house, uh, so you don't ever need them for anything else, and uh, they're not really important in that regard. Um, Moving to the navigation, we don't really need to do much here again. Um, oh no, I actually misbound this. I didn't mean to, to put toggle run walk there. I meant to put auto run there. My bad. Uh, this is what it should look like. A toggle run walk is uh, something that basically just just makes you go from running to walking, as this indicates, which you are probably not going to use very often unless you are peeing a lot. So technically, you can even uh, unbind that entirely, or you can bind it to like some some random key far away, basically. Crouch toggle and prone toggle, uh, I like to have them close. So for me, uh, I would have that on C and then I would have uh, this on uh, V. Um, you can obviously change that depending on your preference. Um, but I think it's it's good to have them like somewhere near your hand because uh, you can actually get an advantage with, with crouching and proning in bushes. So you want to be able to make use of that. Um, yeah, then we have jump traverse again. You, we all need that sometimes, so you want to have it somewhere. Uh, inventory should obviously be on I. I don't know where that was not bound. Um, then you have the entire UI stuff here, which honestly you can leave the same for the most part. You can consider if you want to put uh, make camp somewhere else because you need that fairly often and stuff. But yeah, menu navigation obviously entirely up to preference if you want to change those bindings at all or not. Um, and keep in mind that all the accepts for anything are on F1 and decline on F2. So um, yeah. If you, if you ever get invited to anything, war or something, you'll always have to do that there. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure how the repair kit on T works, but hey. Um, then we have the ping on the middle mouse button. I think that's a, a fine location for it to be. Uh, and the uh, ping wheel, so you hold it down and then you get, get that as well. Um, ping wheel shout, I don't even know what that's... Uh, that doesn't seem to make a difference at all. Um, no idea. Okay, so this is the ping wheel, right? So if you hold it, you can... You can uh, you can do these different commands, but you can also, if you want to, uh, bind them to specific uh, commands. So if you want to use them really, really quickly, if you're like a, a shot caller in a war or something, you might want to change them a little bit. Uh, and then we have something that I think is, is really, really important again. Now, you can use your, your mouse wheel to cycle weapons. I don't really like that um, preference again, but not, not how I would use it. Um, the first thing you could do is put swap active weapon on a mouse button um, because uh, you're going to use this a lot later on and uh, that's a quick way to do it but it comes with a problem 
And that is if you are like in an animation, you won't swap instantly. And if you spam the swap button, then you may end up uh, swapping forward and swapping back again. So that's something you want to avoid. Uh, and instead, um, what I would suggest is using these keys. So, I mean, I'm going to assume going to have at least like two mouse buttons because I don't even know of any mice that don't have some. Uh, if you don't, you will have to use a numbers layout. But what I would suggest is you use your number keys and uh, put uh, all your consumables just on one, two, three, four. Um, so that's very easy. Now, these weapon keys, you instead put on mouse five, so one side button, and mouse four so that you can now swap between your weapons by pressing one mouse button each and you can spam this button because you will still uh, just swap over to the weapon that you want you can't double swap because it's bound to one specific one so that is what i would suggest over uh, swap weapons um unless they entirely fix that I, I know there was something in the in the patch about it um but yeah unless it's 100 fixed i would suggest uh, going for this combination I think that makes more sense. I think it's a more logical way to go about it. And then obviously you have your consumables right here and you have your interact, secondary interact and everything else. Um, yeah, then you have your chat commands, like your, your chat input and uh, push to talk. Obviously put that wherever you want. Uh, you're going to run out of like uh, a lot of free keys eventually. Like for example, right now I could maybe put it on, uh, on five. I think five is not bound to anything. So it's next to my consumables. That would be an option, but obviously, again, push to talk is something that you can put wherever you're most comfortable having it. Um, emote, also something, you know, for, for any social interactions. And then H, H is basically where you trade and duel and stuff with people. Um, flagging PvP is also pretty important, toggle PvP, uh, because uh, you're going to use that a fair bit if you're playing PvP. Uh, and yeah, then the dialogue options, I don't even know. I've never used them once. I guess you can use them if there is ever dialogue options but i've never seen one uh not sure not sure where that's from anyways those are all the settings but um i'm using an alternative layout i'm not using this layout so if you want to go a little more spicy you can go e and then you can go well yeah, the technically it's esdf but uh, the audio is a little bit different so esdf and then you bind your abilities around that i'd like it better um so i have my abilities like all around uh the oh Yes, equip bait. Okay, why, why would we have equip bait bomb? So this is a bit weird anyways, because uh, while you're in this stage, you can't even use uh, other bindings. So I have no idea why why they why they override each other. You can't even use combat abilities while in the fishing state or the other way around. So that's that's a bit odd. Um, but yeah, I changed my, uh, my bindings here to this. And uh, I also changed some other bindings along with that. So for example, my auto walk. Uh, I have on Q because that button is now free, which is very nice because, again, you're going to auto-walk a lot. Um, you can change your potion bindings around along with that if you want to uh, move them up one point. Um, and what that frees up again is I can put my push to talk somewhere else. I have my tab now to use that for push to talk. So, yeah, it just, just makes a lot of things a lot more flexible if you can if you can uh, move your bindings a little bit to the side. But again, that is preference. That is that is how I like my layout. Um, I know that ESDF is not for everyone. And obviously you have to change some other bindings uh, to, to be able to use everything still. So yeah, F figure that out for yourself. See if you if you can get comfortable with ESDF or not. And otherwise WASD is perfectly fine as well. And there are much more crazy input methods as well if you want to. That is all for this video. I hope this was a decent overview of both the settings and the key bindings. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Uh, I will be making a video soon where I talk about how to uh, how to spend your attribute points. Um, it's also going to be like more in-game, I think. It's going to be a quick one because I'm streaming right now, Twitch TV slash Duke Sloth. Uh, I'll be streaming the whole beta there, so um, I'm going to have to uh, improvise a little bit with how it comes to, like how it goes with the recordings and editing. We're going to keep that a little bit shorter for the next four days. And then afterwards, we're back to, to the usual. So with that, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.